Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So we recently started the OPD essential series and today's topic is approach to a patient with fever in OPD. Basically these are just short videos. We won't be discussing the mechanism pathogenesis in detail in this. Our focus would be to learn key clinical concepts and point so as to feel confident while sitting in the OPD. So first of all, many of you must not be knowing the exact criteria of the fever. So let's start with that only. So fever is defined as an AM temperature of more than 37.2 degree centigrade or 98.9 degree Fahrenheit or a PM temperature of more than 37.7 or more than 99.9 degree Fahrenheit. It is important to note that this AM temperature is to be measured at 6 AM and PM temperature is to be measured at 4 PM. Now the normal daily temperature variation that is circadian rhythm is typically 0 0.5 degree centigrade which comes to around 0 0.9 degree Fahrenheit. It is very important that there should be precise documentation of body temperature before labeling any febrile illness and as some patients will wrongly attribute symptoms like malaise or generalized weakness as fever. So it is very important to document fever with the help of thermometers. It is also important that same site should be used consistently to monitor febrile illness because there is a variation between different sites as well. Now what is the best site for measuring fever? Best site for measuring the temperature. So it is lower esophagus, lower esophagus as it is closest to the core body temperature but Due to feasibility, we often use oral temperature as the best site. Now there are certain conditions where infection can be present in the absence of fever. We all must should know that conditions. So these are extremes of age that is newborn and older individual, individuals. So in these individuals, there can be presence of infection in the body in the absence of fever. Other conditions in which there can be infection without fever can be chronic liver failure, chronic renal failure, use of steroids as well as anti-cytokine therapy in various conditions. Now normally what happens is with every 1 degree Fahrenheit increase in body temperature the pulse rate also increases by 10. But if temperature is increasing but pulse rate is not increasing in proportion this is termed as temperature pulse dissociation. It is also termed as relative bradycardia. So for example, at the temperature of 100 degree Fahrenheit, suppose the baseline pulse rate of the patient was 70, the pulse rate should increase to around 95 to 105. But still the patient is having pulse rate of 85, this is termed as relative bradycardia. So again, there are some conditions which can lead to relative bradycardia, important are typhoid, brucellosis, leptospirosis, then factitious fever, drug induced fever etc. Now when we consider the differential diagnosis of fever, there are multiple causes of which infection is the most common. Then malignancies like Hodgkin lymphoma can present with fever, autoimmune diseases have presentation of fever, then heat exhaustion and use of certain drugs can also lead to fever. One practically useful approach which we can use while seeing the patients in OPD is to divide the fever patients into two groups. So first group is the patients having obvious localizing features and the second group is there are no localizing features. So what can be the various localizing fe features? There can be fever with sore throat in cases of upper respiratory tract infection be it bacterial or viral, fever with burning maturation, the most probable cause will be UTI urinary tract infection, fever with cough, shortness of breath and on x-ray if there is a patch or consolidation we can suspect pneumonia. Then fever with pustules, pyoderma is the most likely cause. Then fever with headache, vomiting, neck rigidity we have to rule out meningitis. Then fever with body rash can be seen in a variety of conditions. But most commonly, it occurs in viral infection. Then fever with pain, abdomen, nausea, diarrhea. It can be seen with gastrointestinal infection, gastroenteritis. Now, 
there are no localizing features in infections like dengue enteric fever and malaria and we should always suspect these if the patient is not having any localizing features now in developing countries tuberculosis should always be considered in differential diagnosis of any fever patient who is presenting for long time because it can involve any body organ from brain meninges lung heart intestine etc now if the patient is on long term antipyretics withholding antipyretics can be helpful in two ways firstly we can evaluate whether our antibiotic is effective or not so for evaluating the effectiveness of antibiotic and also it helps to diagnose pattern of certain diseases for example relative bradycardia is seen in typhoid brucellosis leptospirosis then drug induced fever as well as factitious fever plasmodium vivax fever is characteristic because the fever rises every third day there is fever peak every third day similarly there is a fever peak every fourth day in plasmodium malaria borrelia is characteristic of relapsing fever the fever subsides completely then there is relapse of fever hodgkin's lymphoma has characteristic pale epstein fever which is characterized by 3 to 10 day period of febrile phase followed by 3 to 10 day period of afebrile phase again there is 3 to 10 day period of febrile phase cyclical neutropenia is characterized by fever which occur every 21 days with accompanying neutropenia there is a cycle of 21 days and in familial mediterranean fever there is no periodicity so what all investigations will you order in a patient of fever so most common cause is infection so firstly we'll order cbc with total leukocyte count with differentials also we have to see for peripheral smear whether there is presence of band forms there is presence of toxic granules or dole bodies so any of these if present is suggestive of bacterial infection bacteria is as a cause of infection also leukopenia thrombocytopenia can help us in some way so leukopenia is characteristically present in viral illnesses as well as seen in typhoid and thrombocytopenia is characteristic of viral infections like dengue fever then we have to do guided investigations like blood culture sensitivity we can uh, <clears throat> send malaria antigen or thick thin smear or fluorescent microscopy if the uh, patient is in malaria endemic area then we can do vidal test or antibody de detection which is typhi dot urine routine microscopy culture and dengue ns1 or igm antibody other investigations are done as per the clinical presentation so we can advise chest x ray sputum studies crp and autoimmune workup needs to be done if we are suspecting any autoimmune condition finally coming on to the treatment so the first and most important thing always is to search the cause and treat the underlying condition for symptomatic treatment we can do cold sponging and use antipyretics so it is important to note that cold sponging has to be done with tap by mixing tap water with refrigerator water and we do not have to use ice cold water we have to cover entire body with sponging not only just forehead palms and soles sponging must be done for 15 to 20 minutes and if patient is ambulatory and otherwise fine we can also allow the patient to bath with room temperature water what is the role of antipyretics first of all paracetamol or acetaminophen has to be used in each and every case and nsaids are avoided as much as possible so paracetamol is available in 500 650 750 mg tablets if the patient cannot take orally we can also go for intramuscular or intravenous preparation a common intravenous preparation is 1 g in 100 ml of paracetamol infusion now maximum dose is 4000 mg per day but if the patient is suffering from chronic liver failure the maximum dose is 2000 mg per day nsaids are avoided because it affects the platelets and can lead to gi bleeding 
in children we prefer paracetamol and ibuprofen and aspirin has to be avoided in children because of the risk of ray syndrome ray syndrome so this paracetamol what it does is it will reduce the fever as well as reduce the other systemic symptoms like headache myalgia and arthralgia so this is the basic of fever which will help you in the opd practice we have discussed the various causes then how to approach a patient what all investigation we should order and then symptomatic treatment we have discussed in brief i hope you are liking this series thank you so much guys